Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to pick up where we left off last time. Um, where I quickly just ran through the different advanced engines that we have in the game at the moment. In this video I'm going to go ahead and do a step-by-step -step build of one of the diesel engines and include a gearbox and clutch to that build. And I'm going to pretty much show you how to wire it, how to pipe it and how to do everything step-by-step. -step. Let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go over to the workbench here in the Great of Ireland. Let's go ahead and do a base for our vehicle. For the purpose of this video, um, I'm going to use a illustration of a boat. So we're going to use a propeller to, for this example itself. Let's go ahead and go to our inventory. Uh, we go to the aircraft engine, uh, which I covered in the last video. If you missed that last video, um, I will link it in the comments or in the top right screen. Go ahead and I'll show in that video I'll show you all the different types of engines, how to wire them, how to use the gearbox and so on and so forth. Uh, whereas this video is going to be a real in-depth step-by-step guide as how to get that all hooked up and connected right. So first off, let's go ahead and choose our aircraft engine itself. Just over here, we'll go ahead and get that placed down. What we're going to do is we're going to do all the wiring, uh, or not wiring, sorry, all the piping for the engine itself first of all. Uh, we then go ahead and I'll do a step-by-step -step on how, which components I use to control the engine and wire it at the same time just for illustration purposes. So let's do all the piping. First off, we're going to do our air intake. Our air intake for the aircraft engine is just here underneath it at the front. Air intake, uh, you have two options of things you can use. Either you can use a fluid port or you can use a air intake. Either one doesn't make a difference. And we'll go ahead and add that on. Boom, that take care of the air intake. Next off, we're going to do our propulsion or our drive shaft, as you would call it. Uh, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to use orange. So we'll go ahead and connect it just over here, couple, couple pipes out. And then we're going to go ahead and add our propeller to that. For the purpose of this video, once again, I'll use a large propeller. Just add it onto there. Pretty simple, pretty easy, all done nice and easy. Next off, we are going to talk about the coolant. Now, aircraft engine itself, and the same as all the other diesel engines, it has one coolant in and one coolant out. There's different ways of hooking this up. First off, you could just do it in a loop where it just loops around and then back in. Problem with that, it's not going to cool it that well. A couple other options you have. First off, you could use a radiator. You could also use a heat sink, or you could use one of the tanks select water and have it run through that way so we'll cool it there i like to do is use the radiator it's quite nice easy and simple um, what we're going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and raise that so it's on the same level as the pipes coming out of the engine i'll go ahead select the radiator turn it around place it down and then what i'm going to do is connect the piping now the radiator itself doesn't have a in and out you can use either port so it doesn't matter which one you connect it to whereas the engine itself does have an in and out just for the purpose sakes. So we're just going to hit pipe this all up and get that taken care of. Great, so that's now done for the coolant for the engine. Now there's two or three other ports left on this engine. Two of them are going to be the exhaust and one of them is going to be the fuel. We're going to go over to the fuel. Now, well, obviously we need to get fuel. Once again, there's different ways of doing this. You could either use one of the three tanks that are provided or you can build your own custom tank. However, I'm not going to go into this into that in this tutorial. I'm just going to go ahead and spawn one of these little tanks over here. So I'm going to go ahead, place it down just over here, get it all angled up to how I wanted it angled. We're going to go ahead and add our piping onto here. Pretty easy, just out, across, and then into the engine. Quite self-explanatory. All the fuel tanks that are made already or in the inventory do spawn automatically with diesel. You can obviously change this to avgas or water, depending on what you want. Avgas at the moment isn't used for anything until the, they add the turbines into the into the game. So at the moment we're going to keep it on diesel. So that's done for our fuel. That's all hooked up nicely. Next off, we're going to talk about exhaust. Now, the exhaust itself, as you can see, has two outputs. You can do two separate outputs if you like, or you can combine them. 
purpose of this video, I'm going to combine them. I'm going to add the power thing as black or dark gray, sorry. Let's go ahead and get this all popped up. So, going to add a corner bracket there. Going to add a T bracket, T pipe onto this side. Going to get it all piped up nice and easy. All we're going to do is I want my piping to go up. And we're just going to do a couple of pipes like this up. And at the end of it, we're going to add a little exhaust. Instead of using exhaust, you could also use a fluid board if you want. However, I like the exhaust. It looks quite nice. Um, one thing to note is that pipes, as they are, don't count as blocks. So you will need to support this. So I'll just go ahead and add blocks all the way up. So now you can see it's supported. Don't know why, it just is. Word of us support everything as you can see how I've done with my radiator. I find that it won't work if otherwise. So that's pretty much the principal construction of the engine. It's all piped up, uh, all ready to go. What we need to do now is obviously do the logic for this. Now, let's go ahead and jump into our logic. First off, we'll talk about electricity. You can see the engine needs electricity. So what we're going to do is we're going to need a battery. You have three batteries to choose from, the large, the medium, and the small. doesn't really matter what you use. Um, obviously, batteries will, char will power every other component, or mostly every other component. So depending on how many outputs you need, it will vary on the size of the engine or the size of the battery you want. For the purpose of this video, I'm only powering the engine, so I need a small little battery to start it. So we'll go ahead and place down our battery. So, done that, now you can see I've given this electricity. Now the next question is, well, how do I turn it on? How do I get power going to it? Well, that's when we go over to data, just over here on the left. Now you can see a whole bunch of little green and red circles have appeared. You have different size ones. These are for inputs, and these are for outputs. Little ones are outputs. Big round ones are inputs. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Now, as you can see, our battery has a output, tells us to charge. Fuel tank has a output, tells us the constant of the fuel tank. The aircraft engine and all the engines at the moment in the game have two outputs. First one is rotations per second, tells you the rotation per second of the engine. And then next off, you have the temperature of the engine. All of these are green, which means numbers. So it's going to send you a number value. You have two inputs, one is for the throttle, and one is for the engine on off, that's for the starter. So we're going to start with red, so we need to obviously start our engine. We need a button, button to press that. So we're just going to go ahead and go to our inventory and look for our push button. We're going to go ahead, drop push button down, and connect to the engine. Now when you push that button, you get power. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty nice and easy. Next off, we need to give a throttle to that. Now, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, to send a number, you could use a keypad, you could use a lever, use a small keypad. There's different ways of doing it. Um, preferred work method for me is just use a throttle lever. It's nice and simple. It gives you a custom variable number that you can set when you select it. Uh, at the moment, all we need to give it is a 0 to 1, anywhere between that ratio. So that works for us right now. Obviously, there's different settings you can go in and change all that, but as it is for this video, we'll leave it standard as stock is. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go and connect that number up to the engine. And that pretty much takes care of it. However, what I want is I want something to show all these little numbers and all this information for me so I can diagnose the engine if need be. So, to take that numbers, there's two options at the moment. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about first off is digital display where we'll pretty much do any five digit number. Or you can also do is a dial. I'm going to go ahead and use dials. Now, as I said, we need four different dials to tell us all the different things. So, first off, I said earlier that we need the fuel tank. There we go. Obviously, dials do have a, a specific number, but for the purpose of the video, we're not going to change that. Uh, we're just going to name the dials themselves. Fuel we wanted to measure. We also wanted to measure the battery charge. So let's go ahead and type that battery. We also wanted to talk about the, or provide information about the rotations of the engine. So I'll go ahead and do rotations. And then lastly, we want to see the temperature of the engine. Great. So we have all that. We need to hook them up. Now, pretty simple, quite easy. Just go ahead, rotations, drag it across and put it on rotations. 
aircraft engine temperature once again drag it across temperature battery we want to put battery connected fuel tank connect to the one that was named fuel now that's pretty much all it is for the wiring um, one thing you mustn't forget about is it seems that we've added all these new components these new components also require electricity so don't forget to go back to your electricity take that and connect it to all our different items to give it power now that is pretty much the construction done. Wiring, piping, everything, buttons, you name it, it's all done. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spawn this, see if it works. And then I'm going to go and add a clutch and gearbox and tell you how that works. And then also how I wire it up. So let's go ahead and spawn this in. Quickly go over ahead. Let's look at our dials. You can see our fuel at the moment. You can also see the battery rotations obviously nothing because the engine's off and then the temperature of the engine is five so go ahead we'll give it a little bit of throttle and then we'll push the button down and then we have power nice and easy for this environment great so that all works all nice and easy if you see if i lower the value the engine's going to stall and die great cool let's go ahead and add a clutch and a gearbox to that now clutch and gearbox the way I like to do it is to have the power coming from the engine, going to a clutch, and then going into a gearbox. So what we'll need is we'll need a couple of blocks to make that. So let's first off, let's go ahead and find the clutch, which is just over here. We'll go ahead, add the clutch on. Next off, what we want to do is add our gearbox. Now with a gearbox, it does have different height ports, so just be aware of that. So you can see that's connected there, and now it's got another port which is actually lower than what I was on. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect that up. Now that's pretty much done for the placing. Um, pretty easy, pretty simple. Now let's go ahead and say we want to wire it up. So click on our wiring. Now you can see obviously we're still on electricity, and you can see that that needs electricity. So while we're here, we're going to go ahead and wire that up for electricity. And we're going to go jump to our data because obviously we need to control these items. Now you can see here that a clutch a clutch takes a number value either between 1 and 0. And that just depends obviously if you give it a 0 it's going to be engaged and there's no power that's going to be going through. If you give it a 1 it's going to disengage and it's going to send power through to the engine. Pretty simple. Gearbox it pretty much has a toggle button. Toggle on, toggle off, switches from one gear to the other gear. If you go ahead and go to our select component and select the gearbox itself, you can see it has two different gears as it currently stands in this version of the game, which is 4.16. And then you have eight different options to choose from. You can either do reverse, which is one to minus one, one to one, and then so on and so forth. For the video, I'm going to keep it in a basic mode of one to one and one to two. So one to one will be our first ratio, and then one to one will be our second ratio. So one to two, a little bit slower, more torque let's talk faster on one to one great so that's now that's configured obviously as i said we need to wire these up now this simple toggle button will work this is going to need a number value now an easy way of doing a number value as i said earlier is just do a throttle lever so let's go ahead and put a throttle lever throw it down let's say that's going to be our clutch great and then i need a toggle button to change gears so let's go here let's go ahead and name that and say change gear fantastic great so let's go ahead and wire these up as i said we want to give the number two clutch and then we want to give a toggle button to the gears and then lastly we want to just make sure everything's connected by electricity as you can see we place these two new blocks so we need to give these electricity as well Great, and that's pretty much that's it for the component building and the wiring for this engine, including the clutch and the gearbox. We'll go ahead and spawn this in and see if it works. So you can see it's all spawned in here. We'll go ahead and engage the clutch, so we don't want any. Sorry, we don't want any any power, which is zero. So zero is engaged one is disengaged so if we leave it on zero that should mean that no power is going to that so we'll go ahead and we'll start our engine once again just by putting in a little bit of throttle and holding down the motor and there we go perfect you can see that's working 
So now our engine's on and there's no power currently going to the propeller. If we were to go ahead and disengage the clutch, you can see now that the power is going to the propeller. If I was to go ahead and engage the clutch again, change gear and then disengage the clutch, you can see now the engine has completely changed gear and it has slowed down. Now, everything I've done in this video has pretty much been how I would do it uh, or how I would do it for the purpose of this tutorial itself. Uh, obviously we can go a little bit more in depth and talk about it a little bit more and do podcasts on different things uh, and different components, um, but this is a very basic guide and a very basic tutorial for everyone that is struggling at the moment to get everything working. Um, and that's pretty much about it. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it somewhat informative. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for any future videos. Uh, I am trying to keep up with all the current updates from the devs uh, and keep everything updated and provide as much information as, you, as I can to everyone. Um, don't forget to come jump on the Stormworks Discord community. Uh, I'm always on there and there's a lot of other users on there that are very helpful. And if you have any questions, always help you out with anything. And that's pretty much about it. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.